Western Collegiate Conference Championship a year ago. And we should see a good ball game here this afternoon. Bradley's won the last three meetings between these teams, including an 82-79 victory last season at Carver Arena in Peoria, where Hersey Hawkins scored 30 points. And Bernard Jackson, since graduated, scored 30 for the Ramblers. This is a young Loyola team. They've got a lot of young guys who haven't played a lot in the past. They're trying to prove themselves. They lost Andre Moore, the third leading rebounder in the country last year. They lost Bernard Jackson, a good shooting guard. It's a young team. They've done fairly well so far. An interesting matchup. Uh, there are going to be several. They've got the leading rebounder in the country uh, this year and Kenny Miller. And, uh, of course, Andre Moore was the leading rebounder in the country last year. Luke Jackson did a good job on Moore. Let's see what he does with Kenny Miller. Another matchup is going to be Antoine Johnson on Hersey Hawkins. And there you get a look at Anthony Manuel. There's another good matchup between he and Keith Carter. Carter, the guy that stepped in when Bankston went out with mononucleosis last year and played well for them the last 25 games of the season. These games are generally close ones, and we expect the same here in Chicago this afternoon. The ball is in the air, and we are underway. And the gold and maroon clad Loyola Ramblers will start with a basketball. This is Keith Carter, number 14, good point guard. He took over the point guard spot after Tim Bankston came down with Mono last year. And Gerald Hayward inside. Gerald Hayward. Draws first blood for Loyola. That's something Bradley has to work against. They've got the two guys down on the low post, and he'll cut around there all afternoon. Jerry Thomas has to be aware of that and keep him from that easy shot in the lane. Thomas gets the shot, but it wasn't an easy one. It was over a defender, and Thomas missed it. Now Carter goes coast to coast and then throws it away inside. Here come the Braves. A near turnover. Hawkins hustles to get it ahead. Two on one, and Thomas pulls up and misses. A fight for the rebound and a foul on J2. We'll give the ball to Loyola. You might have noticed there, if you got a good look at uh, Hawk when he's diving for the ball there, he's got his left, left thumb Bradley taped. Ball. I knew I'd spit that out. Thomas, his first and the team's first. There's the foul by Thomas. Yeah, you were telling me uh, you were at Bradley's practice yesterday, and that's right. where he uh, yeah, got a bum thumb. Apparently he uh, ran into uh, Luke and hit him in the knee with his thumb and jammed it a little bit. That tape is more precautionary than anything. He iced it a little last night. Should be all right. Hayward again. Gerald Hayward, their leading scorer this year at 24.5 points per game, has gotten him out of the blocks with a 4 nothing lead. Hawkins with a three-pointer, and it's perfect. So the Hawk, who's scoring 40 points per game, as his first three, that's better than half his first half total in Dayton the other night, where he only scored a total of five in the first 20 minutes. Wound up the game with 36. That's like we mentioned. We, he, Bradley has to get him in the groove and get him in the offense. 
It's great, though, when you've got a guy who can turn it on and score 31 points and a half. It shows you what a great player he really is. Stan Albeck wants to get him the ball even more than he does now. Here's the alley-oop. Luke couldn't put it down. A fight for the loose ball. A jump ball called. And it's Bradley's ball on the alternating possessions, although we have a difference of opinion at the scorer's table. Willie Sanchez, one of our officials, says, yeah, it belongs to Bradley. Sanchez, Richard Reels, and Bo Pefrocki are our three officials for the game. Sanchez from the Missouri Valley, the other two from the Midwestern Collegiate Conference. And it goes to Hawkins. Now Trippy's open momentarily, and he hits a three-pointer. So Bradley's first two baskets are threes, and the Braves lead it 6-4. to four. I was talking to Trevor on the bus on the way over here. He only shot three times the other night at Dayton. Apparently he threw up a couple of shots. <laughs> he called them bricks. He wasn't too happy with them and uh, just pulled back and didn't shoot. Hopefully he'll uh, light it up from out there this afternoon. Hayward thought he was fouled by Thomas. The officials didn't. Now here's Manuel. Goes all the way to the hole. Dumps it off for JT, and it spills in. Jerry Thomas. Eight for Braves on the basket by Thomas. That's just the kind of trouble Anthony Manuel can create when he gets in the lane like that. Nobody helped out. He went all the way to the basket. Finally, Loyola got a little help, but it was too late. This is Kenny Miller, the fabulous freshman, and he is fouled by Trevor Trimpe. That's the second against the Braves, and the first on Trevor. Miller is the leading rebounder in the country with 15 per game. He had 68 rebounds in his first three games. I mean, the guy was on fire. This is a guy Bradley has to control. They've got to keep him off the boards and keep him from having a good game. A lot of teams have had success sticking the ball inside against him because he's so young. He's a freshman, and uh, he'll, make, he'll commit a lot of fouls, and then he gets uh, knocked out of the game. What he does not do well is what he's doing now shooting just over 50% from the line, and he misses on both ends, but Hayward is there to clean up the garbage. Sure, Hayward. He can't give that guy anything easy because he's such a good player. Manuel guarded by Carter, so he dumps to Hawkins. In and out. Rebound, Nate Brooks, number 45. The oh. Big Able out awards for hard workers. Nate Brooks would get one. Both teams are the man-to-man. That's about all we'll see today unless Bradley goes to a full-court zone press. Haywood misses both tries, throws up a prayer, and that misses. So he's 0 for 3 on the trip down the floor. Here come the Braves 3 on 1, the dish to Jackson, and it's blocked by guard Keith Carter. And then Luke goes out of bounds, but the ball was last touched by a Rambler. So Bradley will keep possession of it. Good job on the break. Got the ball to Luke. Nice block from behind by Carter, Very the little good. guy. He's only six foot one, and he got up there to block Luke Jackson. Yeah, you got to keep that ball up a little bit higher. You bring that ball down, those little guys can get pesky and knock it away from him. Here's Jerry Thomas baseline, and JT with his second bucket of the night. He has really become productive for the Braves because he's had those games of 33 against Cal Irvine. And then 19 points against Evansville, although he was rather quiet the other night at Dayton. Nate Brooks with a turnaround jumper, and that cuts it to a 10-8 Bradley lead. Brooks, as you mentioned, Mark, known for his uh, defensive expertise. And so's Trevor. That's an interesting matchup to watch, too, see if they negate each other or if either one of them has a big game. Hawkins, he's fouled on the play. And that's the kind of call a year ago that would have gone against the Hawks. Boy, I, time, it goes against number 45, Nate Brooks. We had a good shot of the ref from our angle, and you, I was just waiting to see where he was going to point it. You never know. Brooks coming over for the help. He was moving. That's a good call. But we've seen that go the oh, yeah. other way. So often. I think now maybe Hawk is getting the respect he deserves, and the guys realize that... Uh, Guys are coming in to help out and getting there late because Hawk is so quick. Percy Hawkins has been to the free throw line 95 times this year. His teammates combined have been there a total of 101 times. He misses the first. Shooting over 90% from the line. And there is a rare sight. Two missed free throws by Hersey Hawkins. I don't think we've seen that this year. Carter goes down the other end, misses, grabs his own rebound, and lays it in. Keith Carter. Anthony Manuel's got to keep him out of there. Bradley will have problems all afternoon. Hawk blows the layup. Trevor Trimpey, the offensive rebound, and then a foul 
inside called against the Ramblers. Let's see who it's against. I think it's on Carter. We'll find out soon enough. It is on Keith Carter, number 14. Keith Carter, his first and the team's second. There you see Gene Sullivan on the right, Doug Bruno there on the left in the striped tie. Trying to figure out a way to keep Hawkins from scoring 40. A bad inbound pass is intercepted. Here's Antoine Johnson. Antoine Johnson. Right back. Braves give him no breather. Manuel with the ball, top of the circle. Guarded by Carter. That'll be a good matchup. JT with the turnaround a little long, and Kenny Miller, the nation's leading rebounder, the freshman. And oh. then he makes the mistake of <laughs> turning it over. I think he wanted to pass the ball, yeah. and he threw it right down on his foot. The first mistake he made was trying to dribble the ball up the floor. You don't want your 6'9 freshman oh, dribbling the ball up the floor on the break. A break for Bradley, but they're down by two. Our boys were born at Methodist. For us, it's always been the right choice. Because the birth experience at Methodist involves our entire family. We like the way they do things, too. Like giving us a choice of birth options, from traditional labor and delivery to birthing rooms and suites. And after our baby's birth, a special nurse cared for both of us. Make the right choice for your baby. Choose Methodist. For more information, call 674-2273. Best wishes for a happy new year from WEEK. The North Point Video Bradley Player of the Game will be named later on in the contest. North Point Video will make a donation in the name of that player to Bradley University's General Scholarship Fund. I think Hawks two for two in that category, isn't he? Uh, yes. I thought so. He's won the first two and probably had we televised all seven of Bradley's games so far, he would likely win all seven of them. Yeah, how are we doing so far? Bradley down by two, 12 to 10, and they have conference in front of their own bench. Anthony Manuel doing most of the talking. Jerry Thomas so far doing most of the scoring. He has four points, Hawkins with three, and Trevor Trippy with three. And Trevor will inbound in front of our broadcast position here at the amphitheater, an old building that used to be Loyola's home back in 1980. They left it, haven't been back since, but this year it's their home for the season. Apparently they haven't paid the heating bill. <laughs> This place is colder than any ice skating arena you've ever been in. Manuel is fouled as he goes inside. Keith Carter raises his hand, so that's two on him, and they don't want to get him in trouble. There's some of that trouble we were talking about a little earlier when Anthony can penetrate and get in there and force somebody to come over. Uses his quickness against Carter. I think we saw that a little bit in the game last year. Hawk and Anthony are just a little bit quicker than Keith Carter, and that would be a big help today. Carter blocked Big Luke Jackson, but he couldn't handle Manuel without fouling him. And the Braves have, so far, not been very good at the free throw line. Manuel missing the first, where he normally shoots 70%, 71%. Salvages the second. So the Here, Braves within a digit. Here comes Bradley with their 2-2-1 full court trap. This worked well at Dayton the other night, and it works here. Manuel to the foul line for the pop. That is no good, but Trippi with another offensive rebound. Throws it out to Manuel. Now Hawks spins, double team, throws up a short shot. Braves get it back again. Two or three Bradley guys are getting their hand on the ball when it comes off the rim like that. I'm looking for the flippers. This looks like a pinball machine out here. <laughs> Boy, that press worked well, didn't it? Hawk is pushing and shoving, trying to get through there. Manuel helps to solve some of that pressure with a three-point basket, and the Braves take the lead, 14 to 12. 14-40 to play in the first half. Bradley coming in with a record of six and one. They're only lost down at Memphis State. Carter with the hook, no good. Gets his own rebound, lays it up, that misses. 
Here they come. Shrimpy with another rebound, this time on the defensive end. So Trevor's doing a good job of cleaning the glass today. He's open momentarily, picked up by Hayward, so he dishes off, and now the ball is batted around inside. Thomas finds it, can't find the basket. And freshman Kenny Miller with the rebound, outlets to Carter. Now Hayward on the left wing, guarded by Trimpey, misses the shot, and a whistle on the play. Boy, when Hayward gets the ball down there in the corner, most of the time he's either going to shoot it or he's going to try and drive the baseline. That time he popped. Bradley foul on number 40, Trimper and Trimpey. Trimpey with the foul, his second, and now Donald Powell, number 24, will check in. We'll see if it's for Trevor or not. It is. And Loyola's doing a pretty good job on the board so far. I think maybe looking for a little bit of rebounding power. These guys are quick. They're not real big, but they're quick, and they get up on the boards really fast. So far, they haven't missed Andre Moore on the boards. Moore was cut, incidentally, earlier this week by the NBA's Milwaukee Bucks as Hayward sinks the first free throw, and he has seven points already. Well, that's pretty good when you can lose the number three rebounder in the country and put in a freshman, and then he's the leading rebounder in the country. <laughs> but they lost 40 points when Moore and Jackson left. Well, that's something I alluded to a little earlier, Mark. Some of these guys have been background players, haven't played much. They're proven that they can play. They're only sophomores and juniors and freshmen, but they can play. They come on strong. Guys like Antoine Johnson and Gerald Hayward. Hawkins with a three-pointer. That's something he's really improved on this year. He only, only about 28% uh, from three-point range last year. He's hitting 50% from that range now, and a foul on Luke Jackson or Donald Powell. We'll wait to see who it's against. But it was Miller who was going up under the basket, and Donald will be charged with his first after coming into the ball game for Trevor Trimpey, who had collected two fouls. He's down there to help. Donald came down and uh, tried to cut off the baseline. He got in trouble when he started to reach. You can't... You can't reach, that's when you get in trouble. That's when they'll call the foul on you. Miller, 0 for 2 at the line so far in the ball game. Only 56% from the year for the year from the charity stripe, and he rattles one in and out. <laughs> that basket is so loose it sounds like uh, Mr. Bojangles doing the tambourine dance up there. Except when it goes through like that. Bradley's lead cut to two with 13 and a half minutes to play in the first half. Hawkins holds the ball at his hip, then puts the dribble down, and we've got a foul away from the dribble against Donald Powell, who argues with Willie Sanchez. A lot of pushing going on there. Donald trying to get the pick on Antoine Johnson. Look at this. Basketball isn't a contact sport, is it? The pulling guard, Donald Powell. <laughs> Looked like he got pulled there. Yanked around, pushed. So Loyola with a chance to tie the ball game. This is number 24, Antoine Johnson, goes up with Jackson in his face and apparently on it because he's charged with a foul. That's Luke's first. Bradley this is a quick team and they're not afraid to take the ball to the basket. Luke came over and uh, tried to help Hawk there. And again, he reached in a little bit, and that's where they get the foul. Incidentally, that's 16 fouls against Bradley already. Loyola with only three, so the Braves are going to get themselves in trouble here early in the first half. Antoine Johnson hits the first. This is one of those guys I was talking about, Mark, a background player who's come in and played well. He's been in double figure six of eight games this year. Really didn't play that much last year. Johnson eyes it, shoots it, and misses it. And then it goes off the foot of Luke Jackson and out of bounds. So this could be a four-point trip up the floor if the Ramblers were to hit a three. Hayward to inbound to Carter, guarded by Manuel. Bumps into Luke, Johnson at the three-point line, looking for an outlet, finds Carter. He's watched by Manuel. Hayward isn't afraid to shoot, and that's why. Gerald Hayward is at corner. 18-17 Loyola. Percy with a three-pointer and he misses. Has a couple of those so far. Hayward goes high up to get the rebound. Good pick by Luke that time to free Hawk. On the other end, Johnson with a short jumper. In and out. Rebound belongs to Bradley as it was last touched by a Loyola player. 
see if we can see Luke. There's Luke with the pick on Johnson. A good pick. Freed up Hawk. He just didn't hit at that time. He hit a couple of outside shots in a row. Looks like Johnson got away with a foul right there. Yeah, well, he's not as quick as Hawk. He's going to have to do what he can to keep up with him. Johnson's got the height advantage on Hawk. Manuel with the three. It's short. And a rebound and a whistle on Donald Powell. And that's three on Donald already. He's in trouble. The Braves in some foul trouble and Greg Jones will check in for Stan Albeck's crew to replace Donald Powell. 18-17 in favor of Loyola. And that puts Loyola in the bonus. Apparently the officials weren't aware of it and one of the Chicago television broadcasters <laughs> had to let them know. I'm not sure who he's rooting for, but he was up off the table to let them know that Loyola should get their shots. The legend, Red Rush, boy. Yo. My dad told me before I came up here to watch out for the city slickers, and that guy, he's got some tricks that'll make your head spin. Nate Brooks, the free throw shooter, and why should he be different? He misses. This game won't be one at the foul line, but it might be lost there. 18-17 Loyola with 12-15 to play in the first half. Hawkins on the wing, holds it high to Jones. Now Manuel wide open. Oh, tipped in good. by Luke Jackson. Boy, he didn't have any any kind of position either. He was behind two Loyola guys, got his hand on the ball and knocked it in. And Luke has matched his offensive output uh, the other night in Dayton when he scored only two, but he had nine rebounds in that game. Johnson shoots over Hawkins and hits the shot. Well, there's a little bit of that height advantage. He's about three inches taller than Hawk, and he can shoot that shot over him. The pass to Jerry Thomas out of his range. Anthony dribbles to the sideline to Hawkins, who drives, goes up, and runs straight into Nate Brooks. When he loses the ball, no foul is called, but it goes out of bounds, and it will be Loyola's ball when we come back, with the Ramblers leading by one. Listen to what farmers are saying about the performance they get with Eradicate. Roger, the main reason I switched to Eradicate is that I wanted a broad-spectrum weed herbicide. Right. Well, it really worked good, uh, especially with this dry year we had this last year. I cleaned up my pits and grass. The fields look great. With Eradicate, we have excellent grass control. Besides, we had $2 savings per acre over a lasso, and our corn looks just fantastic. For better grass control than do or lasso, farmers like you are switching to Eradicate. The lowest prices are guaranteed at Applegate Furniture. Lazy Boy and Lane Action, you can't beat the style, fabrics, and comfort of the two leading names of your clients. And now Applegate brings you the largest selection in Central Illinois. We have over 400 models in stock, starting as low as $179. It's worth the present drive to Blackstone for Lazy Boy and Lane Action quality at the lowest prices in Illinois. Our prices are great at Applegate. The Stan Albeck Show, Sundays, only on WEEK. This Bradley basketball telecast, as all of them are, protected by broadcast rights granted by Bradley University and the Missouri Valley Conference. Any rebroadcast or other use without the express written consent of WEEK-TV and Bradley University is prohibited. Stan Albeck looking at a one-point deficit. Loyola leading 20-19. to Bradley in the full court. 2-2-1 zone press. A near turnover by Loyola, and then Hersey Hawkins strips it away. It's still loose. Greg Jones with the recovery. The Braves never gave up on that one. And it might pay off with a couple of points here. They're down by one with 11 minutes to play in the first half. Well, you talk about a fight. They had to steal three times, and then they still didn't have the ball. They had to come up with it off the floor. Hawkins comes out to help Jerry Thomas. Now Manuel in control. Bullets have passed to Hawkins. Nothing doing there. One thing Loyola's doing really well, they're giving Hawk that shot, but they're not letting him drive to the basket. A whistle on the rebound, and the foul will 
will be against Loyola. Jerry Thomas attempting to negotiate for the basket and will not count. Luke with good position that time. It's one of the few times Bradley's got good position on the offensive boards. And you can see the foul by Nate Brooks, which gives Loyola four fouls and gives Brooks a pair of them. Braves with the ball, not with the lead, but they can get it with a basket here. Hawk on the right wing to Luke baseline, and he rattles one in. Jackson, Jackson with four, the Braves with a one-point lead. If I'm not mistaken, Mark, he's made uh, six shots in a row now. He's one for one last game, three for three the game before, and two for two this game. Foul on Anthony Manuel as the Ramblers try to bring it across the timeline. And I'm not sure who was more responsible for that. Well, Paul Wilson will come in. Number 23 for Bradley. As you take a look at Anthony Manuel, that's the first foul against him. The Braves put Loyola in the bonus a while back. And Wilson will replace Jerry Thomas, who takes a seat on the bench with four points. Paul came in off the bench uh, against Dayton and had a really good game. Played the point some of the night. Keith Carter with his eye on the basket and hits his first free throw with Loyola in the bonus. Keith Carter, this is the guy they call the revelation of the year last year. He came in, was thrown into the starting role when Tim Bankston went out with mononucleosis, played really well, led the team in assists, three-pointers, and was third in points behind the two seniors that graduated. Hits both free throws, and the Ramblers are on top. Luke goes inside, fakes Kenny Miller, who comes down on his back, and that's a mistake by the freshman. And that's really important, Mark. That's, I think, something Bradley wants to do. They want to force the action in on Miller. That's something other teams have had success with. They get Miller in foul trouble, and then he's not a factor in the second half. Good job by Luke that time, getting the young guy up in the air. A year ago, Luke was the young guy, and he probably would have gone up and not drawn the foul. A seasoned veteran. Not where he's standing right now, though. Luke Jackson. Technical foul. Is only three out of 17 at the free throw line. And now Gene Sullivan wants to know why the technical foul. Luke Jackson gets two shots. These will be... <laughs> He's perplexed. I'm thinking maybe Miller grabbed the rim on the way up or the way down. If he did, I didn't see it. Yeah, I'd have to see the replay to, to really know. And now the Braves get the ball back as Luke hits one of the two, which is a field day for him at the free throw line. He was hitting only 18% there. Manuel with a three-point bomb, in and out. Rebound to Loyola. This is Hayward. Two on one, dishes to Carter, who lays it up and in. Keith Carter. He has a half dozen. And now the ball gets away, and that's why the whistles were blown. Inside, 10 minutes to play. In the first half, Bradley down by two. The ball out of Percy Hawkins' hands, and it belongs to Loyola. Gene Sullivan barking out the orders. Run and Rambler's doing pretty well so far. They're leading Bradley by two, and they're doing a good job on Hawk on defense. Here's the inbound to Hayward. Gerald Hayward. And Hayward turns it into a basket. A four-point lead for the Ramblers. Greg Jones with a turnaround. Won't go. Jones didn't play at all at Dayton. Now Hawkins oh. goes into the front oh. row. And that fella doesn't know it, but he just saved Bradley's season right there. Saved me from a coronary, too. My goodness. Look at this hustle. <laughs> I think the Russian judge only gave him a two and a half on that lead, but he did a great job there. Not only of saving the ball, but saving himself. Now Loyola with the ball. This is Keith Carter. Holds it high. Hayward 
with the turnaround air ball. Good job that time by Paul Wilson. You'd think he'd be in a mismatch against Hayward. The dish to Jones. Basket interference. They didn't call it. Guy hit the rim. Bradley cheerleader Frank Vance attempting to point that out to Willie Sanchez. See, he knows the game. He knows what's going on. I didn't pick out who it was, but one guy in a yellow shirt grabbed the rim. You could see his arm go through the net, but they don't get the call. Antoine Johnson with the fall away. Loyola taking some nasty shots, and the Braves come up with the ball again. Good D They're by down by four. Manuel with the bomb. No good. Kenny Miller going high up over the rim to collect the carom. Now it's become a track meet, but not a lot of points. Neither team's shooting very well, really. Here's the pass to Brooks, batted away from behind by Jones. Manuel dribbling through traffic, finds Hawkins, wide open for a second, didn't realize it, and then he's blocked as he goes up, no call. And the Braves aren't getting anything underneath the offensive basket. Except mugged. We're not even downtown. <laughs> We're not in the best neighborhood, though. Hayward with the jumper, and he likes that Hayward. spot on the floor as he increases Loyola's lead to six. Hayward with a dozen. Hawkins with the three. Got it. A whistle. Yep. It counts, and he was fouled. A possible four-point play for Hersey Hawkins. The basket is good by Hersey Hawkins. Hawk Hawk almost got knocked back in here to our last. Watch Johnson nail him. Boom. You don't see Hawk, but he ended up over here at our feet. Antoine Johnson with the foul, and Hersey Hawkins with an opportunity to cut the lead to two. He does. And with seven and a half minutes to play, the Braves have closed the gap. We'll be right back. Ned moved to Wheaton, he thought he was going to have to look high and low for a country company's auto claim center. He didn't know that country companies has more of them than anyone else in the state. So how about it, Ed? Hard to find? Nope. It's just five minutes from my house. And the country company folks around here are just as friendly. You got the country behind you. The most auto claim centers. You got the country company. Design Furniture and Systems have created efficient offices for hundreds of Tri-County businesses, from interior design and space planning to product selection, coordination, and accent pieces to their experienced service department's final installation. No matter what your space or budget, Design Furniture and Systems can make your office more efficient through space saver systems like this mobile storage unit or color-coded filing systems. Design Furniture and Systems, their professional staff represents a range of manufacturers to handle all your furniture and filing needs. Pro Wrestling this week, tonight at midnight on WEEK. Hope you'll join us tomorrow. Coach Stan Albeck with the Stan Albeck Show, a premiere tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock right here on WEEK. You'll hear from Hersey Hawkins. Stan will answer some questions from fans. That's tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, the premiere of the Stan Albeck Show here on WEEK. There you see Stan. Stan and the Braves trailing Loyola 28-26, seven and a half to play here in the first half. Bradley shooting 38%. They're only 9 of 24 from the floor. And a turnover by Loyola. Hawkins lays it in. At 2-2-1 two, two, zone, working again. The Hawk with a dozen points. And the Braves have tied it. Good play. <laughs> it's a smart play. He's down there two on one. All you got to do is break it up somehow, and he did. Hayward, the trigger man, 
to Carter. Backing in on Manuel. Throws it way outside to Antoine Johnson and back to Carter. If you saw Carter play in Peoria last year, you saw the stereotype Keith Carter as Nate Brooks lays it in reverse. Carter scored 13 points, and he averaged that for the season. Paul Wilson with the acrobatic move on the block, and then the ball goes out of bounds off of him. Belongs to Loyola. He hit the floor hard. No call. You got a whistle, and it looks like a three-second violation against Loyola. It is. Take your pick. One well, gave he walked, us the, too. Yeah, one gave us the three-second, one gave us the walk. Good job that time by Lou cutting off the baseline from Miller. Then he didn't have anywhere to go once he picked up his dribble. Braves come down the floor trailing by two. Paul Wilson, number 23, with the ball. Top of the circle. Looks to Hawkins, as they often do. Back to Paul. Inside he goes and banks it in. Well, Hawk passed up an open shot there, too. I'm surprised he didn't take it. That was sort of the uh, passing of the baton, as it were, because Wilson will take over for Hawkins in the offensive scheme next year. And now Loyola turns it over again. Sort of a reckless passing team the Ramblers have been. And we see Tim Bankston, the former Bradley Bray, for the first time this afternoon. He's only played once this, this year because of the injuries that Lee told you about at the top of the broadcast. Scored seven points the other night at Loyola Marymount and had three rebounds. He only played three games for Loyola last year before coming down with mononucleosis. Hawkins no good. The save and the recovery by Manuel. Wilson, the three-pointer, is wide off the mark, right into the hands of Kenny Miller. Great hustle again that time by Hawk. Missed his shot, but still made a play to keep Bradley in contention for a score there. Now a pass to Bankston goes out of bounds off the hands of Hawkins, but a whistle before it went out of bounds, indicating a foul. It's on Bradley. Paul Wilson with a hold in there in the lane. Having a little trouble keeping up with Gerald Hayward. Five and a half minutes to go in the first half, and we're tied at 30 with Gerald Hayward at the free throw line. Hits the first. Coming off a 27-point performance at Loyola Marymount. He's got 13 already. He scored over 30 twice this year, including a 34-point outing against Oral Roberts. 14 for Hayward, and a two-point lead for Loyola. Manuel on the drive to the basket, lays it up no good. Rebound belongs to Hayward, out to Carter. Goes coast to coast, and then faked out his own teammate, Kenny Miller, with the pass. So the Braves have it. Braves a little weak on the offensive boards right here. Loyola's good. They're really good at getting position in there. Manuel launches a long jump. It's no good. And then batted out of bounds on the rebound by Loyola. So the Braves will get another crack at it. Do not adjust your sets. There are not a lot of lights in this building. Not a lot of heat either. That might be a little bit of Bradley's trouble. They've come in here. They haven't played in here. They practiced in here yesterday. But it's cold. It's hard to uh, keep your body heat up and get loose in here and stay loose. The foul is called against Greg Jones. Billy Sanchez had his eye on Hersey Hawkins, but he called it against Jones. Anthony Manuel, who scored a career-high 26 points at Dayton. Only one of eight for the field so far, and that one field goal is a three-pointer. So I think we'll see him pass the ball a bit more from here on out. Yeah, and when Hawk is having trouble scoring, that's one of the guys that needs to come through and help out. 4.52 to play in the half, and Miller misses. He does that well. Wilson on the break, lays it up, spills off the rim, and then a foul as the ball came down. 
Greg Jones. Bradley pretty much even up there, three on three. He knocked everyone over. Yeah. When you don't have the position. He fouled Luke. <laughs> Never Here's look at one. it. Not a very good look. A nice striped shirt, though. And a good haircut on Willie Sanchez. Here's Nate Brooks missing the free throw. Anthony Manuel dies and saves it. Hawkins up the floor in a hurry. Looking for his partner, Anthony Manuel. That hit somebody's foot. That should have been blown dead. She, Bankston's all over Hawk. That'll be an interesting matchup. Here's the turnaround. No good. Out it goes to Luke. Now Manuel helps out. Anthony drives inside, lays it up, and hits it. Only his second field goal of the game. You talk about Bankston and Hawkins. They came to Bradley together, and now they are facing each other on the floor this afternoon. From uh, speaking with some of the players before the game, I don't think any of them missed Bankston too much. Referred to as a bad apple. Greg Jones passes up the shot at the dunk, but settles for the two-point layup and a Bradley lead. Nobody in his way that time. Three and a half minutes to play in the first half. Carter goes from baseline to baseline, and then Wilson fouls him. I think it might. Trevor Trimpey will check back in for Bradley. Greg Jones will take a seat on the bench. Bradley foul call to number 32. Greg Jones, his third. That's a pair on Jones, make it three. Donald Powell also on the bench with three. And Keith Carter on the charity stripe with two shots coming. That's something Bradley was concerned with yesterday at their practice. If Carter gets a chance to penetrate and go to the basket, he's going to cause problems. And he's done that several times already this afternoon, gotten in underneath, and the big guys have to help out, get called for a foul. He can get into double figures here, and he does. And we are tied again with three and a half minutes to play in the first half. Corn growers around here know Counter gives you more. More rootworm control, more root mass, more corn. And Counter in furrow gives you more protection where it's needed most. Counter consistently outperforms every other rootworm insecticide. And you can't afford a performance gap. So get more of what you use an insecticide for. Get Counter at your local AgriCenter dealer. At Methodist Medical Center, we're concerned about your health all the time, not just when you're sick. Need a doctor? Don't choose one at random. Call CareFinder and be matched with one of over 450 doctors based on your needs. Call CareFinder at 674-2273. As a major medical center, we set a standard for excellence in caring for you as a patient. But we pay attention to your total health needs, too. We want to help you and your family lead healthier lives and continue our tradition of care. For years, the people of Central Illinois have been telling you about Pekin New Car Dealers. We looked in Canton and Peoria and Pekin and finally decided to buy our car at Pekin. We negotiated uh, for the very best price. Isn't it time you found out for yourself? For the best selection, best service before and after the sale, and the best price, look no further than the Pekin New Car Dealers. They have what you're looking for, and they have it for less. The Stan Albeck Show, Sundays, only on W-E-E-K. Make sure and get your rest tomorrow because we're going to be back with you again Monday with one of the biggest games of the year. ISU comes to Bradley at the Civic Center. You can see it right here Monday night at 8 on W-E-E-K. Always a good one. Bradley with a little foul trouble here before halftime. Powell with three, Jones with three, Trevor Trimpey with a pair, and the Braves have 12 fouls against them in this half. 
compared to only six by Loyola. Graves with the ball, and we're tied. Hawkins lost it, recovers it, then flips it to Manuel. Puts the dribble down, directs some traffic, guarded by Carter. And the Hawk with a three rolls in and out, and Kenny Miller, the freshman, goes high to get the rebound from Morgan Park High School. He's at 6'9", and averaging 15 rebounds per game, Miller is. Again, Hal Hawk having a tough time in the first half. He's only got six. Does he have more than that? I think the Hawk has 10 points. Bankston scoring for Loyola and giving them a lead. Manuel finds the Hawk who keeps running that baseline until something opens up for him. Nothing that time. And a whistle away from the ball on Tim Bankston. And the Bradley fans in attendance applaud. Bankston got in a little altercation, a traffic altercation, driving home on Thanksgiving Eve. He was driving home, a car cut him off. Two guys got out of the car, ran to his car, opened the doors. Apparently, <laughs> they weren't going to take him for a picnic. Bankston got out and slugged one of them. That's how he broke his hand. And he's wearing that wrap on his right hand as Hersey Hawkins drops his 13th point in the bucket. You can't be too careful in these big cities, Mark. That's why I bring you along. <laughs> I'll run. I'm not going to punch anybody. I'll run. Here's the full court pressure again by Bradley. Works again. A bad pass to Bankston. Bradley has it back with 2.14 to play in the first half. You know, and I think every time they've used that, except for maybe once, they've gotten the ball back. They've done a good job with that trap. You might see them go to that in the second half if it stays even. That's what uh, they did against Dayton the other night. They put on that trap and really ran the Flyers ragged. Wilson with a three-pointer. No good. Boy, somebody's got to start hitting a shot. Miller hits the boards. Bankston with a between-the-legs dribble and then a whistle. It's a good thing for Bankston they blew it because he walked right after they did. Bradley foul on number 33, Hersey Foul on Hersey Hawkins. And that is only the 15th foul called on him this year. He is averaging only two personal fouls per game. That's extraordinary for someone who is involved in the offense as much as he is and who plays as wide open and flat out on defense as he does. Yeah, he doesn't get a lot of credit for his defense, but he's improved that quite a bit this year. In fact, the Hawks says that his best overall game all around this year, and there he is on the rebound, was against Evansville. Despite the fact that he scored a season-low 32 points, he also had seven steals, five rebounds, and four assists in that game. Manuel with the whirling move, but the miss. And now here comes Keith Carter, alone in front of the field, and lays it in. Keith Carter. And that gives Loyola a three-point lead with a minute and a half to play in the first half. Hawkins front court dishes to Manuel. Back to the Hawk, open for the three. Misses it. Trevor Trimpey misses the three-point shot. And on the rebound, we've got a whistle. The Braves are four for 15 on three-pointers this afternoon after hitting 12 at Dayton. Boy, if it wasn't cold in here earlier, it's freezing in here now. Bradley can't hit anything. Foul on Miller for Loyola, number 44. That's his second. And Hersey Hawkins back at the free throw line where he struggled a little bit this afternoon. He hit his last three, but he missed his first two. And now he's got four in a row going for him. Something to to think about, you can't really tell from maybe the camera angles, but there's a lot of open space behind these baskets, and they're glass backboards. That might have a little bit to do with it if you're not used to playing in conditions like that. You don't have fans in the background. I think you don't have much of anything in the background. Hawk only four for seven at the free throw line. Bankston in the front court for Loyola. Walk. And he walked. 57 seconds to play in the half, and Bradley down by two, but with the ball. 
And the way they've been throwing up three-pointers, we might see another attempt here. Manuel calls his set play, then bounces to Hawkins on the left wing. Trippy sets the pick. Hawkins throws up the three way off the mark. The Ramblers will look for one shot here. We're inside 40 seconds. Now inside 30. They lead by two. They'd like to have a four-point cushion before they go to the locker room. Hayward, number 21, guarded by Wilson. We're down to 18 seconds. Bankston holds it in front of his former team's bench, Bradley. Hawkins and Bankston matched against each other there. Eight seconds. Hayward, double team. He's in trouble. Three seconds. Carter with the three. Got it. And that's the end of the first half in Chicago. Loyola will go to the locker room with a lead over Bradley after the three-point shot by Keith Carter. It's 42-37, a five-point bulge for the home team. Defeat cabin fever. Start a Craft Cove project. It's easy at Craft Cove. And now Craft Cove has a 25% off store-wide sale in progress. Craft Cove, open seven days at 1 and 150. Like a top-down neon driving. Like a Sugar Ray Express. Like made in the shade, like making it gray, like the coat of the old wild west. I'm an American original, the first draft beer in a can that's an ice cold course with a friend of yours. Very fresh draft beer in bottles and cans. That's been Coors for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12 ounce keg in your hand. Office interiors by Whitmer can maximize the potential of your office for greater productivity. Whitmer provides a complete package featuring office function analysis, interior design, space and systems planning, and installation. Client needs are skillfully integrated with elements of design, color, and the finest in office furnishings. Whitmer also designs and installs filing and finding systems, including movable shelving and rotary and automated files. A productive office requires planning. Planning by Office Interiors by Whitmer in Peoria and Bloomington. For a quick, inexpensive meal, you can have this or Shakey's Buffet. Cost about the same, but you get a little bit more at Shakey's. The salad bar, loaded with garden fresh vegetables, a variety of Shakey's delicious pizza, golden fried chicken and deep fried potatoes, piping hot pasta, and more. Well, that's the long and the uh, short of it. Enjoy lunch for three eighty four and dinner for four thirty four. Now including the new All You Can Eat Sunday Bar. Hi, this is Stan Allback, and this is my man for the best car deals in the Peoria area. Drew Sowers at Veldy Ford and Veldy Lincoln Mercury. Thanks, Stan. We've got the best selection of new and used cars and trucks at the lowest prices right here at Veldy Ford and Veldy Lincoln Mercury. If you think about it, why would you want to go anywhere else? Come in and join the Veldy team today. Bradley and Veldy, the two hottest teams in central Illinois. And remember, if he can't beat your best deal, he'll give you the car free. Just tell him Stan sent you. Best wishes for a happy new year from WEEK. This exclusive telecast is brought to you in part by Coors, the beer with the difference worth tasting. Coors is the one. By Coors Light, there's no slowing down with the silver bullet. By University Ford, where you're always a winner. By Counter, more performance, more consistency. Counter gives you more. By Methodist Medical Center of Illinois. By the Country Company's Insurance. You've got the country behind you. By ICI, makers of Eradicane and Dipenate. And by North Point Video, Audio and Appliance. Peoria and Morton. Foreman Carpet has got some fantastic deals for you during our year-end warehouse and showroom clearance sale. That's Foreman Carpet, 1106 Derby in Pekin. Toyota Quality. It's a tradition that keeps growing stronger year after year. Number one in its class for customer satisfaction, the Toyota Tercel. The most trouble-free car sold in America. The Toyota Cressida. The best-selling 4x4 compact truck, Toyota. The number one compact truck sold in towing capacity and payload, Toyota. And they're all sold at a first-class dealership. Peoria Toyota Volvo. Who could ask for anything more? This is the last one. Somebody better go out. I'm not going out. America Pages Plus. Published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop sitting down. 
Why look something up in a pinch when you can pick something up in a pinch with the simple use of your fingers? Ameritech Pages Plus, published by Donnelly Directory. Shop here and shop good. Show Sundays only on WEEK. With Lee Hall, this is Mark Strauss at the Amphitheater in Chicago, where Loyola leads Bradley at halftime, 42 to 37. The North Point Video Bradley Player of the Game will be named later in the game. North Point Video will make a donation in the name of that player to Bradley's General Scholarship Fund. And Lee, you mentioned a little bit earlier in the broadcast that Hersey Hawkins has owned the award this year, but he's only four of 13 from the field so far, and the rest of the Braves haven't shot much better. Yeah, well, I mentioned a little bit before halftime that there is so much open space behind the baskets here, and you've got the glass backboard. If you're not used to that, that's going to cause some problems. Back at home at Carver Arena, you've got people behind you. It helps with your depth perception. And a Hawk doesn't look like he's forcing his shots. It just looks like maybe the the arena might have an effect. Now that might not be it, but they are shooting very poorly and it's something strange we haven't seen from them for a long time. And another factor might be the fact that uh, Percy Hawkins is shooting from outside tonight and while he did well at Dayton from outside, he's thrown up a lot of long shots here this evening. That might be affecting. We'll be back at Loyola in just a minute. That to have benefactors in the Bradley community to endow the arts at Bradley with the funds to bring in the leading artists on the cutting edge of American art, theater, music, to work directly with the faculty and students here at Bradley. And in the two and a half years I've been here, we have had Richard Thomas, uh, the television star. We have had Jeffrey Holder, the great Broadway choreographer and writer and actor. This year we're bringing in Linda Lavin, who just won the Tony Award uh, on Broadway. Uh, we have had directors from television and from film, and, uh, a full spectrum of artists that has been absolutely crucial to the success here at Bradley and makes it unique and gives it adva an advantage over any other university its size in the study of the arts. Rootworms are the biggest threat to your corn crop each year. And you need the consistent performance of counter. Last year, tests by major universities in the Corn Belt proved that counter works best. It prevented economic loss to rootworms in 95% of all tests. The next insecticide prevented economic loss in only 73% of the tests. That's a serious performance gap. And you can't afford a rootworm performance gap. Get counter at your local AgriCenter dealer. It's the right place at the right time on the right day. You'll stay At North Point Video in Peoria and Morton, get the best in Sony Entertainment. You'll find an excellent selection of video cameras and radios. North Point Video's competitive prices bring Sony Trinitron Color TV performance within reach of any home entertainment budget. The latest in Sony video technology is at North Point Video, now at two locations. For large inventory, low prices, and professional service, North Point Video and Appliance at North Point Plaza in Peoria and 250 Detroit Avenue in Morton. 
It's our best sale ever because everything's on sale at Naked Furniture. It's a store-wide sale, and now for a limited time only, save on everything in our showroom. Quality, custom-finished, and ready-to-finish furniture in oak, ash, pine, cherry, and other beautiful woods in all your favorite styles. The savings are truly exceptional. Be sure you're one of the ones who save on quality custom furnishings during the store-wide sale at Naked Furniture. Naked Furniture, 4234 North Randy Wine Drive, Peoria. Best wishes for a happy new year from W.E.E.K. Welcome back to the International Amphitheater here in Chicago. The Bradley Braves trail oil at the half scores 42 to 37. And it's kind of like old home week here at the amphitheater. We've seen former Bradley player Tim Bankston. Hassan Houston is here in attendance today. And we've also seen a face who uh, was on our telecast last year. And we're glad to see him again. Former Bradley guard and uh, Missouri Valley Conference player of the year a couple of years ago, Jimmy Les. Jimmy, thanks for joining us. Uh, nice let's, to be here. Well, thanks. Let's uh, catch up on what you're doing now. We know you're not playing in the CBA anymore. Well, as most of the people know, I was one of the last cuts by the 76ers and decided to give the CBA a try. And I really wasn't uh, very happy there. And I decided that uh, to put basketball aside for now and uh, stop chasing the dream for this moment and uh, take a job offer down here at the Mercantile Exchange in Chicago, which is putting my finance degree to work uh, from Bradley. And I'm very happy, and uh, there's still some, some basketball possibilities in the future, but until now, uh, I'm a working man. Yeah, what exactly about the CBA didn't appeal to you? Uh, were, you were you playing well, or was that it? Or? I was starting, and I was playing uh, you know, a lot of minutes, uh, but it was other factors uh, that were involved. It, you know, without getting too in-depth, uh, it just wasn't the right situation for Jim Les, it, and it wasn't a situation I was uh, accustomed to. So I felt uh, rather than stay there and be unhappy, to uh, do something that made myself happy. So that's what I did. Yeah, we hear you might uh, try the 6-4 and under league. What are your plans for the future? Well, there's some talk uh, to playing at 6-4 and under league, but right now I'm at the point of my life where I always told myself in college that I wasn't going to chase the basketball dream too long. And uh, if the right situation comes on, along with the 6-4 and under league, you know, I'd love to play. I know I can still play and still produce. And, uh, you know, I, I still believe that I could have played in the NBA under the right circumstances. But uh, for right now, I'm happy working, and I'm happy to be around my hometown with all my friends. And uh, But I'm still following Bradley basketball close. A good friend of mine, Paul Herzog, keeps me up to date on what's going on. So, uh, you know, I can't complain. How about this game here, the first half? Bradley's having a lot of trouble shooting. We can well, use your shot today. <laughs> well, I think when uh, they're having trouble with the outside shot, they got to look to go inside more. And, and another thing that's important is defense. They got to. We haven't seen too many fast break baskets, and you know, as you know, that's Bradley's style. So defensively, they're gonna have to try and pick up the pace to create some offense, create some easy baskets, some turnovers, and some fast breaks. Jim, thanks a lot. Good seeing you again. Good luck. Thank you. Hope to see you in a uniform here pretty quick. All right. All right. This, as Jim knows, always a big game. Loyola and Bradley. Bradley trails 42-37 at the half. We'll be right back. Before I got a hold of Jay Jansen, I was without a place to stay. The neighbors across the road gave me a home. I wasn't allowed to go back on my place because of uh, it being a court order. Matter of fact, I did go home one day from work in Peoria at the end of it all. People in Lincoln asked me why I got Jay Jansen, and I said because I wanted to feel defended. Brown Sporting Goods presents another great fitness value. The Spalding B400 Bench is made of heavy-duty 2-inch square steel with 6-position incline and a unique crutch tip arrangement for easy lift-off during squats. A super bench for only $149.88. You save $50. But wait, you also receive two great accessories free. Included are the $60 value butterfly attachment and the preacher curl, a complete quality system. A total of $150 savings, only $149.88 at Brown Sporting Goods. 
Good shelf heights in Kiwani is furniture, but it's more, much more. <laughs> It's one cellar restaurant featuring Kurt O'Shea on weekends and holidays, and Sister Kathy is homemade soups, pastries, and other specialties served seven days a week. So bring the whole family for a day of fun at good, America's Furniture Show Place. The Stan Allback Show, Sundays, only on WEEK. I'd say some of the individuals have been most influential in my life since I've come to Barley have been the faculty. Not only have I had the opportunity to get to know them inside the classroom, but outside the classroom through advisory roles or just through friendship roles. They've um, given me knowledge both academically and personally, and I've gained a lot of insights through them about life in general, and I think that they've been most influential because of this. I'd say one of the most, not necessarily peculiar, but outstanding things that has happened to me since I've come to Barley is when I was elected to my panel on a classes, there was an article in the newspaper about it, and I must have had every teacher I've ever had or presently have come up to me and congratulate me and say, Mary, we're really proud of you. You're going to do a great job. And that made me feel really good inside that they took the pride in me and knew that I had the responsibility to accomplish that. And I really think that they were truly sincere and that made me feel really good. With Lee Hall, this is Mark Strauss back at the amphitheater in Chicago where Bradley trails Loyola 42-37 to at the intermission. The Braves shooting very poorly in that first half, and we'll be taking a look at those statistics in just a moment. The Braves with only 28% from the field so far, and Loyola hitting a rather impressive 58% but they've out-rebounded the Braves 29-20. to 20. So there's the big difference in the ball game right there. Bradley's Hersey Hawkins, the leading scorer for the Braves with 15, but he's shooting only 27% from the field, and Manuel with six points, only 20% from the field. So the Braves' backcourt combination shooting around 25%, a combined six of 25 this afternoon. And as for Loyola, Hayward with 16 points, Carter with 13, Johnson with 5, and Brooks with 4, but certainly Hersey Hawkins and Anthony Manuel, although they have produced 21 of the Braves' 37 points, have also shot around the 25% mark together, and for various reasons, perhaps the fact that Hawk is trying to take too many long shots, perhaps the double teaming, you know, he's double teamed every game, and he certainly can't beat the double team every game. It's very difficult for someone to do that every night. Antoine Johnson's done an outstanding job on Hawk defensively, and Bankston has two in the final minutes there of the first half. Hawk's not getting those inside shots. As you said, he's forcing, forced to take some outside shots. Oh, and looky there. They start recruiting them very young. Happy New Year. But look what they get when they work hard enough. Fellas like this. Loyola will start the second half with the ball and with a five-point lead, 42 to 37. The Braves will open the half with Anthony Manuel, Hersey Hawkins, Trevor Trimpey, and Jerry Thomas, and Luke Jackson at center. Loyola with number 14, Keith Carter. Number 21, Gerald Hayward, who holds it over his head now. Brooks. Kenny Miller and Antoine Johnson out there for the Ramblers. Hayward on the baseline, shoots around Jerry Thomas, and Hersey Hawkins is there to collect the carom. Let's see if the Braves can clean up the act from the field in the second half. Trippy had designs on a three-pointer, but passed it up. Inside it goes to Jackson, but it was batted out of bounds by the freshman, Kenny Miller. Since Bradley's not shooting so well, we might see a little bit more of that here in the second half than passing up that long shot. Looking for Luke Jackson to try and uh, maybe get Miller in foul trouble, although he hasn't been a big factor other than on the boards. He's gotten his rebounds, but only one point so far. Manuel with the three, got it. So much for that strategy. Anthony Manuel. They couldn't hit the three in the first half. They were 5 of 20 from the three-point stripe, but they start the second half off with a bomb. Carter on the turnaround. Hayward on the rebound. And the Braves take over. 
Anthony tosses to the Hawk. Inside it goes, then back to Manuel for the three. Got it. Ooh. Anthony Manuel for three. Jekyll and Hyde, the Braves couldn't hit the ocean in the first half, and they've hit a couple of threes and have taken a one-point lead. Carter, the high archer as he drives and hits. Keith Carter. Got to keep him out of the lane. They let him penetrate. He's, He's got some trouble. He's got 15. That's better than his average. Open again. Good he pass. almost fooled Luke, but Luke was there to lay it in. That's something Stan talks about. Uh, don't surprise the guy if he's not expecting a pass. Jackson fouls Kenny Miller as he was left alone in front of the Bradley basket, and Miller will go to the free throw line, and if you're going to send somebody there, you might as well send Miller. Well, that's something uh, Bradley usually catches other people falling asleep getting back. Miller did a good job getting back that time. Luke a little bit late getting there. Got him on the arm. And as you can see from that first replay, Luke didn't know until the last moment that Miller was going to get the ball when Miller stretched his arms out to receive it. But he has been awful at the free throw line. Going to be a good matchup for the next couple of years seeing these two guys play against each other. Miller two for seven at the free throw line so far this afternoon, and we're tied. Manuel lost it, recovers it, passes it to Trimpey, guarded by Gerald Hayward. Hayward's a good ball player. And Manuel good. makes the great move and drives the hoop for 14 points. Amazing quickness down the baseline that time to get to the basket. Anthony just blew through everybody. Rays with a lead. Carter barks instructions to his team, holds out four fingers, indicating a set play, then passes to Hayward, who's guarded by Thomas. Turns on the baseline and throws up the archer that rattles in. Gerald Hayward. We're tied again. Hayward good with the hook that time. Hooked his man and got around him. Trimpey with the three, long on the shot. Miller with the rebound. Out it comes to Carter. They give you no time to take a breath. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Brooks from the foul line jump. No good. And now the fortunes begin to swing on that rim. Manual off the mark. Catch that. Carter saves us and then drives and hooks one no good. Hayward is bumped. He wanted a foul. But it goes out of bounds, and the Braves will have it. It was a good job that time by Anthony helping out down there after Hayward got the ball and slapped it off Hayward's knee. They've got to keep him off the boards. If he gets on the boards, he's going to do a good job. Stan's trying to tell him something, trying to get Luke into the offense a little bit. We said earlier, he only shot one time against Dayton. He's got seven points so far. Thomas misses the rebound. Then it's batted out of bounds, I believe, by Nate Brooks. In any case, it will belong to the Braves. And we're tied with 16 and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Boy, and those are those shots. Coach's gray hairs. Can Stan get any more gray hairs? I, I wasn't going to say anything. He'll be happy if those that are gray Jerry. just stay in. <laughs> Thomas with the basket and Bradley with the lead. 49-47. Another bench, Gene Sullivan, trying not to lose two in a row to ex-Bulls coaches. Carter with the bomb. Gene that puts Loyola up by one. Manuel with the pass to Hawkins. He flips to Thomas, who was fouled as he drove the basket. Let's see who it's on. Nate Brooks, his third. Keith Carter has a pair for Loyola. So does Kenny Miller. The Braves, Donald Powell, Powell and Greg Jones with three apiece, but they're both on the bench. The team's first. Jerry Thomas shooting 57% from the free throw line. He's been a Jekyll and Hyde player this year. Against New Orleans in the opener, he fouled out in only four minutes of play. But then against Cal Irvine, he had a career high by halftime and finished the game with 33. 
and had another good outing against Evansville when he scored 19 points and collected eight rebounds. Yeah, we seems like we never know which Jerry Thomas will play, the one who has those big games or the one who kind of falls along the wayside. Thomas and his teammates head to the bench Officials. and side here in Chicago. Our boys were born at Methodist. For us, it's always been the right choice. Because the birth experience at Methodist involves our entire family. We like the way they do things, too. Like giving us a choice of birth options from traditional labor and delivery to birthing rooms and suites. And after our baby's birth, a special nurse cared for both of us. Make the right choice for your baby. Choose Methodist. For more information, call 674-2273. What are farmers really saying about the way eradicane works in their fields? Well, we used dual before, and uh, it just didn't kill the grasses. So we decided to switch this year to eradicane for the first time, and it, it worked wonderful. What about you, Don? The performance was excellent, and I got a full spectrum weed control. I couldn't have been more happy with eradicane. For better grass control than dual or lasso, farmers like you are switching to eradicate. Starting your own business, whatever the size, isn't easy. It takes hard work, time, and money. And that's why I bank at the First National Bank of Peoria. They needed their business to understand my business, and I like that in a bank. Whether you need a loan, checking your savings account, or employee benefits plan, Peoria's First Bank has all the services you need to make your business grow. No matter what size your business, you're sure to get results. The First National Bank of Peoria. We'd like to talk business with you. Best wishes for a happy new year from W.E.E.K. If you've recovered yet from yesterday's overdose of football, join us tomorrow for uh, the AFC wildcard game between Seattle and Houston. It's at 2.30 here on W.E.E.K. The Seahawks just barely squeaking in the Oilers there for the first time in about six or seven years. And don't forget on Monday we'll televise Bradley and ISU here on W.E.E.K. I understand they have Bob Donawald masks made up for that game at Carver Arena. The ball passed off Luke Jackson's foot, so Loyola will have it, and they'll also have a new 45 on the shot clock, which has not been needed today. <laughs> I think he was claiming it went off his shin and not his foot. And while you watch the replay, Keith Carter scores and gives Loyola a two-point lead and a scramble for the loose ball. It belongs to Loyola. So this could be a big swing of points for the Ramblers. The game was tied when we went to the break. The Ramblers could go back on defense up by four. That's interesting. Every time Bradley takes the ball out, Kenny Miller just stands there in Luke's face and tries to bother him. That time he did. Kenny Miller. Miller scores. And it is a four-point Loyola lead. This game is always a battle. There are so many guys on both teams from Chicago. In fact, all the Loyola guys are from the Chicago area. This is for bragging rights, as it always is. Jerry Thomas. Nine points for Jerry, who went to Chicago Collins High School. Carter drives on Manuel, goes up in the crowd, gets the pass off to Miller. Kenny Miller. He threaded the needle in some traffic. Percy Hawkins still hasn't scored in this half. He has 15 points. In fact, he hasn't even taken a shot. Manuel inside on the double pump, simply trying to draw the foul, and he was successful as Antoine Johnson walks away in disgust. That's his second. He becomes the third Rambler with two fouls. Nate Brooks has three. Anthony trying to create something with a penetration here. And he does. He draws a crowd. Good help that time by Loyola. So Manuel steps up to the line where he's shooting 71%. And of course, you are looking at the holder of the all-time Bradley single game assist record. 21, which he set in that game against Cal Irvine. A lot of things were overlooked in that game besides Percy's 51 points. Manuel perhaps overshadowed by the big night 
from Hawk. Here comes the press. Bradley really needs something out of this. They need to turn the ball over. They nearly got it, but Manuel couldn't save it before it touched the near sideline. That's where they want to get them, up against that sideline, where they have nowhere to go. That's right, it acts like an extra defender. Hayward. And he is the big man with 20 points for Loyola. His average is near 25, and he has led them in scoring in seven of the first eight games. Hawkins with a turnaround, no good. Hayward throws it right into the arms of Manuel. A whistle. Hayward is hurt. And let's see who the foul's against. Looks like the Braves. Luke Jackson, I think he tripped over Luke's foot. Yeah, it was an inadvertent trip. It was not intentional. I'm not even sure if it was really a foul, but they call it anyway. Johnson lost the handle. Loyola with a four-point lead. We've got 13.40 to play in the ball game. Brooks with the turnaround, and Loyola with a six-point lead. Boy, they're getting the ball in there so easily. No denial of the ball. Hawk out to Manuel for the three-pointer. Got it. That's his third this half. Boy, they need him to pick it up, too. They really need his help with Hawk not scoring. Anthony, now the high man in the game for Bradley with 19. Ball out of bounds, but belongs to Loyola. And Donald Powell will check in. He comes off the bench with three fouls and no points. After seven games a year ago, Donald Powell was averaging 20 points per game and 10 rebounds. Much less playing time this year. Those figures have been cut in half. What more can you say? Nothing but net. Miller inside. You hear the slapping going on. No whistles. And he follows in his own miss. Teddy Miller. Only a freshman. Boy, if he keeps improving, he's going to be tough. Ball belongs to Loyola. Or does it? Make it Bradley. <laughs> Long day for Stan. Gene Sullivan liking what he's seeing so far. His club has a five-point lead. Same facial expression by both of them, so you never don't know who's having a good day. It doesn't change until the clock runs out. Antoine Johnson is the guilty party. He has three fouls. Loyola foul on number 24, Antoine Johnson, his third. And Trevor Trippi will inbound in front of the Bradley bench. And it goes to Anthony. Finds Hawkins inside, but a man in his face. Donald goes up, walked away, but a whistle before the rejection. And let's wait for the call. Stan Albeck wanted a goaltending call, but... Good post up there by Donald. Loyola foul on number 45, Nate now, Yeah, the foul was on Brooks, yeah, and he so fouled Donald before he left his feet, so... Yeah, I think it was a good block, though, too. I don't think it was a goaltend. It looked like it was on the way up. And that's four fouls on Brooks now, so... Gene Sullivan may opt to make a lineup change. He has played with six people today. Tim Bankston, his only man off the bench so far, and he hasn't seen action in the second half, and then Powell blows the opportunity to cut into a five-point Loyola lead. Well, that's about all you'll see from Loyola. They've got six starters, and they don't go very deep. Donald with the second, and it is no good. And Brooks make amend, makes amends for the foul by grabbing the rebound. And now he tosses it across the timeline to Antoine Johnson. Juan, as he's called, dumps it to Carter. Johnson in trouble on the baseline. Carter just did hang on to that. 
Better job this time down the floor by Bradley denying the ball into the low post. Once they get the ball in there, these guys know what to do with it. Do a Nine good job. seconds on the shot clock. And Johnson was called for traveling. Loyola with a five-point lead, and we've got just under 12 minutes to play. The day you drive out with a new car, you start driving down the value month after month. With most auto insurance, total a car two years later, and you just get the used car value. But with country companies' keeper policy, if your car is wrecked beyond repair, you get a brand new car. Same make and model, even if it costs more than you paid at first. So get the country behind you. You got the country company. Like Larry, Moe, and Curly, fast cars and fancy shoes. Like Buffalo Bob and a lucky dog, and like cats who sing the blues. I'm an American original, the first draft beer in a can, at the five pole pools, with a friend of yours. Brewed fresh draft beer in bottles and cans. That's been Coors for over 25 years. Taste the original today. Put a 12 ounce keg in your hand. This is the year of the big screen. Almost every brand now has a big screen, but there's only one big screen that outperforms and outsells the rest. It's Mitsubishi, and that's why I have one in my home. Only Mitsubishi offers over 15 different designer cabinets to choose from. Now you can have a top quality big screen in a designer furniture series at Sherman's for your big screen headquarters. So buy your Mitsubishi big screen at Sherman's. Imperial 3 blocks south of Sheridan Village, in Bloomington and the Zayer Plaza, and in Pearl across from the Pearl Mall. The Stan Albeck Show, Sundays, only on W-E-E-K. Well, after my trip to the Slopes Tuesday, I can guarantee you I won't be in this program anywhere. The world's best skiers compete tomorrow on World Cup Skiing. It premieres tomorrow here on W-E-E-K and continues every weekend through February 13th, 13th, as some people call it. World Cup Skiing tomorrow on W-E-E-K. Bradley trails by five now, 11.52 to play. 62-57, and Mark Bradley's scored, and Anthony's hit some three-point shots, but they still really haven't gotten into a groove offensively yet. Hawks not coming off the picks. He's not getting open off the picks. He's he not. hasn't scored this half, and uh, we've gone through almost nine minutes of it. A three-pointer, however, and that's the fourth by Emmanuel in this half. He has 22 points. Well, he picked Bradley up at Dayton the other night, and he's got to do that now because Hawk is just not getting open. And not hitting his shot. Hayward with a three. That won't go. Miller with the rebound. Misses. Gets his own. Triple team and dunks it. The running Ramblers aren't running, but they sure are jumping and rebounding. Here's Manuel on the drive. And a whistle, a push called underneath. If it's against Brooks, he's out of the ball game. It isn't, it's against Carter. Loyola foul on number 14, Keith Carter. Anthony tried to get something going that time. Tried to penetrate, get underneath, make somebody commit to him and pass off. Carter all by himself. Loyola is the only ones getting any fast break baskets. Bradley isn't. And that's why they're down by six. Still shooting poorly. Donald with a reverse. Hawkins lays it up and misses. Luke fights for the rebound. Jump ball. This one will belong to Bradley on the alternating possessions. 66-60 Loyola, and we have 10 and a half minutes to play. Gene Sullivan's team led at halftime, and they have maintained that lead, thanks in part to this play by Keith Carter, who was left alone doing a little cherry picking. There we go. Donald Powell has the answer for Miller. Let's see if that gets the Braves going. 
It did the other night in Dayton when he came up with, came up with a big dunk. Now the Braves on defense force the turnover, then it's stolen back by Loyola and Powell commits the foul. Looks like we had a travel here. I'm wondering if Donald fouled someone, what is Antoine Johnson doing to Anthony Manuel there? <laughs> Don't answer that. Number 24, Donald Powell, his fourth. It wasn't a bad call, but the non-call on Johnson with Manuel lying flat on his back was a bad non-call. If you're not going to call one, you can't call the other. Well, we saw that earlier in the first half. Bradley had twice as many fouls called against them as Loyola had. Miller, who has been awful from the free throw line, now can't even find the rim. And the Bradley folks are getting on him. And this is a home game for them. He misses another. Luke Jackson goes high for the rebound. Hawkins looking for his first points of the half, doesn't get him, and then Jackson paws the ball out of bounds as he tried to grab it. And that'll give it back to the Ramblers who lead by four. Inside 10 minutes to play, Manuel looking for the steal, loses his footing. Carter in the front court, picked up by Thomas. Throws it away to Johnson. Miller oh, double dribbled. How can you argue that, Kenny? How can you argue that? Well, I think he's upset at himself more than anything. Gotten just a little bit too much of a hurry. That's something Luke was doing last year. He was quick and he's got good moves, but he was in too big of a hurry. Unless he is arguing that he was fouled and they didn't actually double dribble. Doesn't matter, Manuel answers at the other end. 24 points for Anthony, who had a career high 26 at Dayton earlier in the week, and he can match that here at Loyola. Braves within two, with 9.19 to play. A bounce to Hayward, he hasn't been afraid to put it up, but a whistle on the Braves as he misses the shot. Jason Jerry Thomas. He's doing a good job on him in the second half. Number 21, Jerry Thomas. On Hayward, that is. That's four <laughs> team fouls on the Braves. I don't know what game the guys at the scoring table are watching. They were holding up their hands uh, that JT had fouled out. And they held up a five, like is in five fouls. And that's what uh, is going on here. They're explaining to him that somebody made a mistake. Willie Sanchez <laughs> trying to straighten things out. Yeah, he only has two, Willie says, to one of the other officials, and so Jerry can go on. And Gerald Hayward can go up to the free throw line. He's the leading scorer for Loyola with 20. Make it 21. The lead is four again. Crimpy with a three, got it. The lead is one. Excellent ball movement that time by Bradley. They worked the ball around and got the open shot. You don't think Hersey Hawkins knows he's cold. He's 0 for 4 in the second half. And when he got the pass, he immediately underhanded it to Trimpe, who was further away but open. Carter with the pop. 60. Make it 70 to 67 for Loyola. Manuel with the drive, but a whistle before he lays it up. And the Braves now in the bonus. 
Let's see if they can cash in at the free throw line. Neither team has shot well today at the charity stripe. That's the fourth foul on Keith Carter. Brooks has four also. Most of this crowd here at the amphitheater are Bradley fans. There you see a guy in a Bradley shirt, and I'd say she's at least half, if not more, of her uh, Bradley followers. Or family of Bradley players, well, most true. of whom hail from the Chicago area. And now the scorer has the wrong statistic on Keith Carter. They've got him for five fouls, but we have him for four. Apparently somebody uh, still enjoying New Year's Eve over there. Somebody's uh, somebody's perhaps, seeing double. Perhaps. Our statistician Perry Cole offers our book as evidence. I'm not sure they'll take it though. So the Braves not in the bonus now. Apparently they had signaled the one and one. A lot of confusion. Fifth three-pointer gives him a new career high of 27 points. And well, we are tied with 8-10 to play. Welcome home, Anthony. Brooks is blocked by Luke Jackson. Bradley ball. And the Braves can take the lead for the first time in the half. Big trip up the floor. Big trip up the floor for Bradley. A great defensive stop that time. If they score here, we might see a big run by the Braves. Thomas misses. Hawkins with his first points of the second half gives the Braves a lead. <laughs> Bankston just gets over the line in time and then lays it up and misses. But the rebound is batted out to the mid-stripe and Johnson recovers. Bankston now out at the point to Johnson. Luke Jackson there to collect the garbage. Luke Hands. got a break that time. He didn't have a real good position, but he got the ball. Hawkins hit it. Yes. Here we go. As Dick Vitale would say, you need a T.O., Gene Sullivan, a T.O., a timeout. Gene Sullivan doesn't need Dick Vitale to tell him that. He does it anyway. Bradley leaves. At Methodist Medical Center, we're concerned about your health all the time, not just when you're sick. Need a doctor? Don't choose one at random. Call CareFinder and be matched with one of over 450 doctors based on your needs. Call CareFinder at 674-2273. As a major medical center, we set a standard for excellence in caring for you as a patient. But we pay attention to your total health needs, too. We want to help you and your family lead healthier lives and continue our tradition of care. Bill, did you know that Diphenate Insecticide gave more dependable root worm control than Furidan or Lorsban? No, sir. Next time, I'll go with Diphenate. Diphenate for stand-up control. Randy. Yeah. Did you know that Diphenate gave more dependable rootworm control than Furidan or Lorsban? Oh, yeah? I'm using Diphenate from now on. Diphenate for stand-up control. Best wishes for a happy new year from W.E.E.K. Join us tomorrow here on W.E.E.K. for the premiere of the Stan Albeck Show. Tomorrow morning at 11. Go to church early. 11 o'clock, we'll hear from Percy Hawkins. Stan will answer some questions from the fans. 11 o'clock here on WEEK. Loyola trying to get the crowd back in the game here. Bradley's gone on a run. They lead 74-70 with about seven to play. Loyola sending out Carter, Bankston, Brooks, Hayward, and Miller. Carter and Brooks each have four fouls. The Braves with Manuel Hawkins, Trimpey Thomas, and Luke Jackson. Percy Hawkins has led the Braves in scoring in every game this year, but a second half effort by Anthony Manuel, who now has 27 points, 10 more than the Hawk, has helped put the Braves on top for the first oh. time in the half. Anthony hit the deck, no call. Hayward couldn't get it to drop. 
Graves run the floor. Hawkins with the three. Yes! Seventy-seven to seventy, and the Hawk has twenty. And for him, that's a bad day. More confusion at the scorer's table. They Stanley wonder if it's a three-point three play. It is a three-point basket. And the scoreboard indicates it's a three-point basket. But the scorers have had all kinds of problems this afternoon. There was some question about Trevor Trippi's basket. Bradley foul on number 53. Before the last time out, whether it was a three, it was not. They put it on the scoreboard as a three and should not have. At any rate, Gray's by seven. And Nate Brooks at the free throw line on the foul by Luke Jackson, who now has four. That's what we mentioned earlier in the game, Mark, that uh, Hersey hadn't scored very well in the first halves of the last two games. But when he's had to, he's come on, he's helped out, and he's put points on the board. And it looks like he's ready to do that now. He's getting a little help from Anthony Manuel, as you mentioned. Brooks is perfect on this trip to the charity stripe. And the Bradley lead is five with 6.15 to play in the ball game. Inside it goes to Hawkins. Passes to Thomas who is fouled on the play by Brooks and he is out of the ball game. ran into a roadblock, saw Jerry under the basket, and before Thomas could grab the pass, he was bumped from behind. Bumps? I think bumped is a nice term, Mark. Hawk trying to get Miller up in the air. Gets up, realizes he's not going to get a good shot off. Tries to dump it off to JT, and he's fouled. Mr. Brooks gets a seat. He's one of the uh, only two guys left when Len Bertolini was going to Loyola. In fact, both of those two guys right there, Stefan Robinson and Nate Brooks, were here when Lenny was here. And we're having another discussion. In the meantime, Brooks leaves the ball game with eight points, and Stan Albeck has reached the point of disgust over the confusion <laughs> at the scorer's table. I hope anybody, I hope the guy over at the scorer's table isn't doing anybody's taxes this year. The IRS is going to have a heyday. Just think if they had to count by more than two or three at a time. <laughs> <laughs> Manuel making Boom. the count by three. He has 30 points. He says, you know, this is a lot more fun than giving the ball to Hawkins. That's right. Bankston with the acrobatic move and the foul on the Braves. Trevor Trimpey winds up with the worst of it, flat on his back and with the official pointing at him. It'll be a shooting foul for Bankston. Playing in only his second game this year. Injuries kept him out. A broken hand, which is still healing and wrapped. Now they decide to inbound from underneath the Bradley basket. So he didn't get the shot off before the whistle. Braves by eight, both teams in the bonus. Bankston with a Paul Wilson-like shot. And then a miss on the rebound. Hawkins. No shot, so he smartly passed it off at the last possible moment before the heels of his shoes hit the ground. Five and a half to play. Bradley by eight. Hawkins hits it. The three-point shot by Hersey Hawkins gives him 25. He scored 31 in the second half at Dayton. He has eight in the second half. Make it 10 in the second half here. Carter, short on the layup. Braves can make it. A 13-point lead, and Antoine Johnson makes sure they don't. He'll be called.
called for the technical, I believe. Well, they, the Loyola guys are complaining and screaming at the refs every time. Great pass by Anthony and another great pass by Hawk. Bradley's getting into the transition game and uh, forcing the action a little bit here. Johnson may have had a case there, but that wasn't the best angle to really tell whether JT was fouled. Thomas with two shots and a chance to put the Braves up by 13 on these free throws. Jerry's in double figures with 10. Only gets one of the two. So it's 84 to 72, and now Hersey Hawkins will shoot one technical free throw, and then the Braves will get the ball back. He struggled today. You notice he's got the uh, tape and the wrapping off his left hand. That might have might bother you a little bit just to have the tape on there. There's something there that shouldn't be. And well, we haven't seen him go inside as often as we normally do, and so obviously the defense is bothering him because he's well, taken a lot of his shots from outside. Antoine Johnson isn't letting him take the baseline. He's getting some good help in keeping Hawk from driving the baseline like we see him do so often. Manual. A great shot as he was bumped and shot as he fell away from the basket. 32 points for Anthony. He's playing the game of his career. Boy, and just think of how cold he was in the first half. He's twice as hot as he was. He was 2 of 10 from the yeah. field in the first half, and he has six three-pointers in the second. The dish to Hawkins. Bradley leads by 16 points. Hawkins has 27. And we're worried the guy's not having a good day. <laughs> Miller with the stop. Four minutes left in the ball game. But it's not the right stuff because they're down by 14. Bradley went on that, gone on that big run now. A big defensive play about 10 points ago and Luke stopped him and blocked him. Hayward pushes it up the floor in a hurry to Bankston for the reverse layup. Looks good until it fell off the rim. Loyola's not making their shots now either. That helps. And the Braves want a timeout. Stan Albeck senses Bradley losing control. They lead 88-74 with 3 minutes and 35 seconds to play. The day you drive out with a new car, you start driving down the value month after month. With most auto insurance, total a car two years later, and you just get the used car value. But with country company's keeper policy, if your car is wrecked beyond repair, you get a brand new car. Same make and model, even if it costs more than you paid at first. So get the country behind you. You got the country company. What do farmers have to say about the performance they get with Eradicate? I was looking for a herbicide that uh, would do a better job than the lasso that I'd been trying before. I went to Eradicate, and I've had very little trouble. It works when it's wet, it works when it's dry. We've been having such inconsistent control with the lasso that my dealer recommended that we try Eradicate. And it was cost us $2 an acre less, and we had excellent control. For better grass control than dual or lasso, farmers like you are switching to Eradicate. The Stan Albeck Show, Sundays, only on W-E-E-K. Well, we hope you'll join us as the Braves host Illinois State Monday night at 8 here on W-E-E-K. What you're watching now is a big Bradley run. They've gone on a 21-4 run. They lead Loyola. 88-74. we got three and a half minutes to play. And for a change, a new face in the square, honoring our player of the game, it's Anthony Manuel, who has 32 points in this ball game and has almost single-handedly put the Braves way out in front. 26 points this half. And I don't think there's any doubt. Now, you see so many national publications, and they rate backcourts, the backcourts, the guards. And uh, one had Ed Davender and Rex Chapman of Kentucky rated number one. And then they had uh, 
uh, the Purdue guards, Mitchell and Lewis. And then they had Virginia Tech's guards. Well, Bradley's got, as far as I'm concerned, the two best guards in the country together. And Anthony Manuel showing that today. His seventh three-pointer of the half. For three. 35 points for Anthony Emanuel. A Bradley Brave normally scores 40 points per game. It's not Hersey Hawkins today. It might be Anthony Manuel. 91 to 74. And Carter. Keith Carter. Breaks a 23 to 4 Bradley run. And there's the guy that's been the main cause of it right there. And you wonder what he would do if he wasn't passing the ball to Hawk every game. Probably this. And we might find out next year. He's done this in one half. Outside Trimpey, Carter tried to flip it away from him. Couldn't get a hand on it. Loyola really tightening up the defense, hanging right on him. Now a whistle against the Braves. <laughs> and with all the holding going on, they call it on Bradley. Coaches, I don't know what they're lobbying for. They got the call. Prayer of thanks, maybe. Carter with the free throw. Got it. The Braves went three-point wild on in that game against Dayton. They had 12 of them. That set a school record. Perhaps Perry Cole could tell us how many threes they have this afternoon. Carter is perfect from the free throw line. We've got two and a half minutes to play in the ball game, and the Braves way up. Perry informs me that Bradley has set a new three-point single game record. They have 14. Anthony Manuel with seven of those in the second half alone. Jackson on the fake, Miller on the block, and a foul is called. It's not on Miller, though. At least I think it, it's on someone else if on Tim Bankston. I want to correct myself real quickly, Mark. I was talking about Purdue's guards a minute ago. Troy Lewis and Everett Stevens rated as the number two backcourt in the country. You've got, in this backcourt though, you've got the top scorer in the country, the top assist man in the country, and the top assist man who's scored 35 points this afternoon. Well, Loyola assistant Doug Bruno was saying to you before the game that he really believes that Percy Hawkins is the number one player in the country. <laughs> and right there, he gets the rebound out to Luke Jackson, who missed both of his free throw attempts. And little things like that that don't show up in the box score really help. Jerry Thomas with the turnaround, and this one Jerry is all but in the bank. Bradley by 15 with 150 to play. Loyola would have to start throwing up bombs here. Hayward does, but he misses. And Bradley will run some more time off the clock. One thing we've heard a lot of so far this season, Mark, is Percy Hawkins is scoring 40 points. He's scoring 44 points a game, 42, 39, whatever. What's Bradley going to do? Who are they going to go to in the Valley season? Because he's not going to get to score that many every game. And I think we've seen this afternoon that Bradley is not a one-man team. Hawkins with the one-man effort, though. Although he's a good man to have around. 29 points for him. Langston dumps it off to Johnson. A whistle before the shot. And as we look at the rest of the ledger, Jerry Thomas has 12. I see Trevor Trimpey with six and Luke Jackson with seven, so they have gotten some input from most everyone. And you can see Hersey Hawkins congratulating Anthony Manuel there on his play this afternoon. He was really excited to be back in here in the amphitheater. Yesterday at the practice, the Chicago League plays their uh, championship here. He saw a lot of good players as a youngster play here. And now he's proven he's one of them. Probably better than most of them that played here. Carter with the air ball, and then Hawkins throws it away. 50 seconds to play. Hayward with the short jumper. Gerald Hayward. But it's still a 15-point Bradley lead. Down to our last 40 seconds. Don't forget to join us on Monday 
Our telecast of Bradley and ISU starts at 8 o'clock from Carver Arena. And as Manuel drives the lane, he is fouled and will step up to the free throw line to add more to his career high 35. Bankston charged with the foul as some of the Loyola fans start to head for their cars. Get those heaters running. <laughs> run from the folks in the neighborhood perhaps important for Bradley to play <laughs> to play well <laughs> going into that ISU game really turned it on when they had to 36 for Anthony Manuel thirty seven he has bettered his career high of a few nights ago by eleven points Geez, if he would have hit any shots in the first half, he would have broke Hawks' scoring record for a single game. That's right. Manuel gets it out to Trimpey. 20 seconds to play. Alley-oop to Jackson didn't work. Hawks says, here, take another try at it. <laughs> the Braves with 99 points. 10 seconds. Fans won 100, over. but I don't think they're going to get it. Hayward with the three. It's short. Miller stuffs it. The game is over, and Bradley has won. 99 to 82. A year ago, the Braves didn't win.